There are two types of recordings which require extremely different uh, approaches both to record and to reproduce. And, uh, and one of these types is the one that's, that serves currently as the yardstick, as the yardstick for most uh, audiophiles and 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 for reviews and reviewers and the yardstick for that is uh, is the the jazz type of uh, recording then you have a lot of instruments that uh, that create very high energy sound like a uh, trumpet trombone all kinds of brass instruments and and then percussive instruments uh, and 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 i showed as an example here a really kick-ass uh, jazz band and uh, and of course you can see in the background that's why i have it here that for these recordings the the venues are 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 much 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 less than satisfactory in 99.999 percent of all cases when these recordings are done and and because of that the venues where these recordings uh, occur are, are usually really harsh and bright and uh, and to have the reflection of these uh, bright instruments already, the result is truly ear bleeding. And uh, uh, however, there is something that makes uh, the, the recording process uh, that we have today, uh, it's adapted to record these type of situations because our microphones have directionality to them. So basically, they are much more adept at recording the sound coming directly at them and they are preferentially leaving out the sound that bounces back from the room. So let's have a look at it. So when the sound is coming directly perpendicular to the microphone's uh, condenser in the body, then 100% of that sound pressure level will be converted to the signal, to the energy that it uh, forwards the recording equipment. However, if the signal is bouncing back from your room and comes at an angle, depending on the angle, it, uh, the variation can be uh, quite tremendous. And I here I just showed a drop of 4 to 12 dB, but, uh, but the, the preferential pickup is even wider than this. It, it can be even like uh, you are not hearing the signal at all. So if the signal is bouncing at close to 90 degree to the microphone, you are going to get like uh, minus 70 dB from the signal, which is basically it's not there. So, so uh, our miking solutions, they do not pick up most of what's happening in the room. They just pick up the initial high energy transient that comes from the instrument. And, and and the reverberations are not there really and and this makes recordings harsher and brighter but at the same time leave out a lot of the room interference and and this works really well when the room has problems and and that's why uh, it, it's something that that overemphasizes when, when a room is made in a studio recording because there it's there's an additional absence of these secondary informations and that's why studio recordings are so squeaky clean because you just have the direct radiated sound from the instrument and nothing else and when you have a brass instrument uh, or a metal instrument then in that case, this will result in an apparent increase in resolution because there's no reverb, uh, there's, there are no echoes, there's no delayed uh, signal coming in. You will uh, perceive it as if the recording is of extremely high resolution. But what's really happening in the background is that recording is not higher resolution compared to a recording where you have the... Uh, ambient information it is just missing so much of that information and then what you hear is highlighted much more and your brain thinks you have higher resolution but if you have experience at uh, at hearing music uh, live 
and, and you spend some time studying how it sounds like, then uh, you will uh, quickly realize that uh, when you have those uh, squeaky clean sounding recordings in, uh, in systems that overemphasize this quality of those recordings, it's thoroughly unnatural. That's not how it sounds real live. Uh, the other aspect uh, of, of music reproduction, which our microphones currently are not suitable for, is to record classical music or instruments that have wooden bodies. And, uh, and, and you will notice that uh, the, what these guys noticed here, uh, I'm showing a video that I made almost exactly a year ago. The title was Ultimate Live versus Recorded Audio File Tests. And I show, uh, a, a, show two tests. One test that was recently made, and this is a test in 1957, which, which I think are really, really uh, educational. And, and here, uh, this is, I would say, watch this video if you have not. It's half an hour, but it's really worth to see. So what they did here is that they, there was an orchestra and they recorded the orchestra playing the material in the concert hall uh, itself. And then they uh, replayed the recording in the very same concert hall. And, and they took turns with the orchestra playing or the orchestra being paid back from the uh, sound system. And they observed what is the difference that you can hear between the live orchestra playing in the, in the, live, in the venue or the recording that was recorded in the same venue and played back. And, and the uh, interesting thing that they found is that, uh, let me see, can I forward it here, that what they noticed, actually, they involved the entire audience, 2,500 people, uh, to see whether they could tell the difference between uh, the recorded music and the orchestra playing live. And, and most people could not tell the difference whether it was live or not, but what people could say, that those who had trained hearing, they immediately recognized that when uh, they heard it reproduced, the energy of the strings and wind instruments was distorted when they heard the reproduction. So it means that you heard much more of the strings of the violins and much less of the woodwind uh, instruments. And this is because the uh, microphone, when they record, they are preferentially recording the direct sound and they are not uh, getting the, 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 the reverb, uh, the concert hall acoustics as much. So, so when we are looking at the process of recording, here it is, then what happens is that the microphone filters out a lot of the uh, wooden body of the instruments because for a violin that the direct sound that, that that leading edge that comes from the instrument is the string being energized by the bow and those resonances are really loud and carry really fast and that's what the microphone picks up with 100 percent efficiency but then the strings start to resonate the wooden body and the wooden body uh, starts to emit the sound omnidirectionally and, and and those resonances fill up the room and are radiated back to your ear from every kind of angle from the room and most of that information is missed by the microphone because it just gets those parts which are directly coming at it which is just a negligible proportion of the information that comes from a violin and reaches a human ear. So the human ears hears totally different from a microphone. And that's a huge, huge, huge issue that needs correction in case you want to hear a violin in your room which resembles a violin 
that you heard at the concert hall and it doesn't uh, sound like a screaming uh, plastic cat with, uh, with some steel uh, whiskers. So what can you do to uh, give back that wooden tonality, the wooden body to the sound? That's where the live cabinet enters the picture because the live cabinet is just like the body of a violin. So the sound of the strings that was recorded preferentially by the microphone, that in real life at the concert, at the venue, resonates the body of the violin. And that creates the violin sound. At home, you do not have the body of the violin, so your loudspeaker cabinet has to be the body of the violin to emit those omnidirectional wooden uh, resonances. And, and I would say now majority of audiophiles get, gets a heart attack because, oh my God, we are coloring the sound. We are adding resonances to the sound. Where does this lead us? And, and I agree with you guys, it's, it's not going to give us perfection. But if you don't do this, you have a castrated recording that misses a, a big, big portion of the live acoustic event. And, and if you force the absolute fidelity to a broken recording, then all you will have is an absolute broken reproduced recording. And uh, yeah, it, it has its beauties and, and I, I truly enjoy it, but honestly, I can uh, listen to that sort of reproduction, that sort of showroom sound, maybe for half an hour, once a year, and, and then, then I reach my capacity. After that, that I had enough of shows and, and I, I want to go back, listen to real music and, and not that type of thing. And, and if you have been wondering, about what creates showroom sound. This is what creates showroom sound, forcing fidelity to a broken fidelity. And uh, what's th the point of a live cabinet? And what's, what are the good things and uh, difficulties with it? I'm going to talk about it in another video because that deserves uh, a, a video in itself. And, and why is the live cabinet working? Why can it work? And when will it work for you? What uh, is it that will make it tick or talk? Thank you for tuning in. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.